Hello again, I am Blunty. The question of this video is, can Starfield run, and more importantly, run acceptably, playably, on the ROG Ally and other devices like it? For example, the newly announced Legion Go from Lenovo, an upcoming handheld gaming PC that shares basically the same processor as the ROG Ally, but in a much more Nintendo-inspired form factor. And the answer, of course, is yes, because you're looking at it happening right now in this video. You are paying attention to the video, aren't you? Look, look here. Look at it go. <laughs> what you need to get there, what settings, what resolutions it'll work in, well, we'll unpack all of that throughout this video. Now, back in June, I made a video where I spent a little time extrapolating out from what we knew about the newly published minimum and recommended specs for Starfield at that time, and trying to contextualize that within the framing of performance of other recent release and demanding games to try and tease out a prediction of how well Starfield would run on the ROG Ally handheld gaming PC and what we'd need to do to get there. And back then, what I said was... So I think the Ally owners can hold a little hope that Starfield, in your hands, may very well be achievable. At the very least, docked should be a practical option. But I guess we'll see in a few months. And it turns out, I was basically right on the money. Can I get a little comment love? Some thumbs? A little bell and sub tickle? Because I don't want to sound too smug about this. You know, for, for being right, yet again. But I was right. Yet again, all bow to big brain blunty. <laughs> Call it. <laughs> Sorry, I am a little smug about it. You know, it feels good when you make a prediction like this and it sort of pans out. I can't help but feeling smug. You would too, admit it. So, first things first, if you don't want the game to hard crash, basically no matter what you do, you're gonna wanna smack up the My Asus app and install the brand spanking new graphics driver they just released. It is specifically tagged for support of Starfield. You are going to have a lot of problems if you don't get this done. Trust me on this. <laughs> First thing I tried after installing that driver was batting around a mix of medium and low settings at 1080p and using FSR to set a 50% resolution scale. So basically internally rendering at 720p and letting AMD's fancy algorithms clean it up for 1080p. And as you might imagine, and right in line with my predictions, you're gonna wanna be in turbo mode to make it even slightly useful. I used Jemison as my stress test point, as yesterday while streaming I found that even my newly built monster rig, uh, this was kind of the only point where I couldn't reliably smack around 4K native at a solid 60fps on said monster rig. So this is obviously the problem area. And we're mostly okay here, dips into the high 20s in the worst spots, but mostly 30fps or better. The good news is, although this is a performance crippling area of the map, absolutely nothing happens here, at least in my nine hours of play so far, that is combat based. It's all role playing stuff. It's all dialogue based and questing and exploration and things like that. And, you know, going into terminals and bits and pieces. So the less than 30 FPS log doesn't really mess with gameplay. Although it is a little unpleasant, of course, if you are like me and can be especially sensitive to low frame rates in this style of game. This is tolerable, but not ideal. Outside of this though, rather impressively, it easily maintains a better than 30 FPS uh, performance in outdoor areas, like on Mars here, and inside facilities and ships, it gets all kinds of ambitious with mid 40s, which for my taste is a much more ideal place for things like firefights to happen at. Which again, in my experience so far, the majority of firefights do happen in these enclosed areas. So that's good, that's fine. But, as I recently discovered in my video exploration on the old 900p trick, that with a little tweaking the ally can be made to behave under, you can suck up a little extra performance for very little visual sacrifice by going to a 1600 by 900 resolution. Now, alongside the registry trick that you need to do, that I showed off in the other video to get this to work on the ally, you'll also need to set your Windows desktop to 900p. For this to work because Bethesda still have not fixed their shit kicking game engine to make full screen resolutions that don't match the Windows desktop resolution work. It's idiotic. It is beyond frustrating that they still haven't fixed this. How is this still a problem? Everybody else on the planet who makes games has figured this out, Bethesda. And it's only one of many classic Bethesda derps in Starfield's guts that I've stumbled across so far, but whatever. I was right yet again in my whining about the creation engine. Oh, but it's updated. It's creation engine 2.0. No, there's still a bunch of problems. 
and Bethesda are still stupid for sticking with it. I was right again. Give it to me. <laughs> Back on point, the 900p trick saves us just enough performance overhead to clean things up at the same mixed settings I was using for 1080p and get me a much more stable 30fps while doing it in the problem areas. And in enclosed areas like ships and facilities, it'll kick around to the low 50s and even get all bold and reach for the 60s every now and again. This, in my opinion, is the sweet spot for the ROG Ally and this game. Mixed settings, turbo mode, 900 p tricked. It works really nicely. Very playable, both docked and handheld. Although that said, of course, you're gonna wanna be plugged in still as turbo mode is not for a long battery life made. This is the kind of game where you're gonna sink into it for a while, so plug yourself in. But there's a question. What if we do want better battery life? How about the standard performance mode of 15 watts? Maybe 720p low settings, I thought? Uh, no, actually. Not even with FSR upscaling from 360p. I can survive, Jemison, with frame rates that dip below 30s in the worst areas, but this... This is a schmear of ugly, blobby crap and frequently struggles for even 20 FPS. It is um playable at this point. But how about a custom power mode? Something a little more conservative than turbo, but a little smackier than performance mode. Well, I've seen some ally users swear by a custom 18 watt setting, so I tried that. And sure enough, at low settings, 720p, we can get those bare minimums in Jemison, and out in space we're looking at something close to the 40s, on the Mars surface we're scraping by at 30fps, interiors, the low 40s, it's pretty playable. Not ideal, but playable. A friend offered me a nice cushy And indeed, that untethered handheld footage is what you saw at the opening of this video. That was 720p in the custom 18 watt mode. And it survived combat just fine. So yeah, the ROG Ally and its cousins coming along from other brands who share the same brains will indeed take a fair swing at Starfield, which considering the reports I've seen from other players so far on various combinations of hardware and the unexpectedly low performance for GPUs that normally aim a bit higher than what they can do with this game, I'd say that's pretty damn impressive. Again. And I tell you, that AMD Z1 chip, or otherwise known as a slightly custom AMD Ryzen 7 4840U APU, is one heck of a little monster. AMD just kill it with these APUs. It's amazing. But man, <laughs> you should see what my big rig can do with this game. And you will. So make sure to sub and bell and ding and all that so you know when that video drops, because that monster of a rig can run this game at 4K, native, no upscaling, all the graphics settings maxed out, except for motion blur, which you turned off because I'm not a savage, and at 60 FPS almost all of the time. Guess where the problem area is. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there, and I will catch you next time.